Let me um, first thank the, the panel. Uh, it's, it's the first panel that started this summit, but also the last panel always leaves us so much things to reflect upon, and I want to thank them. And it was a great discussion. In fact, it, it, had, it sort of made me alter a bit of my comments, but I hope you'll bear with me because it was really very rich, and I think uh, uh, it gives us a good direction uh, going forward. But in a moment, um, I'll invite uh, His Excellency uh, Abdullah bin Tuk, Secretary General of the UAE Cabinet, to share his reflections on the 2019 Annual Meeting of Global Future Councils. Um, but let me first, on behalf of the World Economic Forum, uh, thank His Excellency Mohammed Al Gergawi, Minister of Cabinet Affairs and the future of the UAE, and in my ad, his great team and the government of the United Arab Emirates uh, for the commitment, partnership, and hospitality extended to the Global Future Councils. So thank you. Um, let me uh, see, they've already sort of started, but I'll speak to this in a moment. But let me first pick up some on, on, the, on the discussion that prior to, to this, our closing here. Um, Suzanne, I, I always, you know, enjoy listening to you, and I've certainly I, I heard, I learned a lot in the panel, but you started with this notion about, um, you know, focusing on human intelligence, and if I'm not mistaken, I know in, in some schools of thought that uh, what separates us as a species uh, is that as humans, we're, we actually can imagine a future, and not only imagine that future, but we plan for it. And I think there are quite a few evolutionary biologists who say that's what makes us different, that we can imagine a future and we can actually go about and plan for it. So I, know I took that as a really key, key thing to, for us to reflect upon, but um, you may also recall um, the panel chaired at the very beginning by my colleague Anil Menon at the start of this meeting. Um, his panel underscored the need for every council member to commit to thinking and doing if we are to have a collective impact. It's good to remind ourselves of that as we close this meeting. And another important reminder from them was to make every effort to engage the communities and constituents not present here with us in Dubai, nor that will be with us in Davos. And I think that's a very, also a very important thing to reflect upon. Um, so my, my, my remarks will, will focus on those two elements, what each of us can do in the months ahead and how we can engage the rest of the world in our efforts every day. Uh, the strategic context for this is, the, is this, this aspiration. Um, you know, we could look this way, but it's, you know, we as a internet, you know, World Economic Forum, and it's not about our annual meeting, it's us as an institution, you know, we want to be this platform to integrate all the efforts and enable the efforts of all the actors, NGOs, business, civil society, uh, in achieving the mission to improve the state of the world. Um, and here in this context, I think in the past, 48 hours, um, I think we've identified really six imperatives that flow from the brainstorming sessions of the 38 councils and over 700 experts assembled here today. Um, these are imperatives. From them, there'll be some initiatives, but I think more importantly, I hope there's some important new narratives that emerge. Um, if I may, based on what I heard from the panel, I think there's one theory of change. If you want to change a system, I think there's one way. It's first, if you can identify or reorient its purpose, all right, that's how I think we could deal with it, the complexity of these systems. If we can make the system do something else. I hear in these corridors people talking about, well, the healthcare system shouldn't be about illness, it should be about wellness. Um, I hear when I read the newspapers that trade should not be about trade, but maybe it's about employment and other things, but it's changing. People are debating the purpose of things, and I think we, we shouldn't lose sight of that and the importance that you have. I agree, there's no simple solution, but maybe there's a better understanding that the work of these councils can help and help us rethink the purpose of a lot of these systems. Um, and there, what are the, some of these imperatives that, that I know that, you know, it's going from, do, do, I, I would rather have, I prefer the slide to say from Dubai through Davos because it go, extends beyond Davos. It's gonna inform the work of the forum and all our constituents for the year ahead and years ahead. But there are these imperatives and the reality is, is that and I love this, what the panel was sharing with us, with test practices, because there are no technical solutions to these. There are adaptive challenges, and we're going to have to feel our way through this. I would love that there are best practices, but the reality is they're test practices. And we will have to look at these. But the key is, I think, each of these six imperatives, I think, speak to the work of not just one, but multiple councils here. 
And we want to engage with you around that. And again, one factor of the future success of each council will be in developing initiatives linked to these imperatives, yes, but more importantly, your impact will also depend on developing compelling narratives, right, that engage other forum constituents that uh, in other communities and the public at large. You have, I think, with your expertise and insight, you have one more creative challenge, and that is to build that narrative that brings us all together, makes us feel part of this. It's not a story. The story we, we know, you know, we, we sort of know how stories play out. I mean, they're told to us. Narratives were part of it. We, we can actually make the ending together. And in this context, I thought it was important to sort of think about the road ahead, and again, through Davos, and perhaps reflect a bit on, or at least elaborate a bit on the two digital platforms that can help each of your councils to share knowledge with other experts and communities to engage citizens worldwide around your initiatives and your narratives around these imperatives. Well, that's a mouthful, but work with me here. So what, are, you know, what is that road ahead? And from today through 2020, we have a number of, of actually exciting convenings because we have to bring people together. Um, and, but in this day and age, I think we have to leverage the digital technologies that enable that in ways that we can be together in many more ways on many more issues uh, uh, without s we losing sight of what you know, the goal is, right? And to change and transform these systems. So we know that your council managers have, and, 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 and has talked to you about some of the things you can do and, and deliver with us, working with us on webinars and some other items. But let me talk to you about how we hope to share that knowledge. That was my, remember I, I said I want to talk about two things, sharing that knowledge. Um, you should know that since launching a public version of our strategic intelligence platform here, here in Dubai two years ago at this meeting, we have more than 220,000 public users of these platforms. There are every day 6,000 active users and on average 500 new subscribers each day. This doesn't include the network of 6,000 uh, experts that are part of the forum network uh, here in, term, in different domains over 140 issues. But there, every day, literally hundreds of people are engaging. Thousands of people are learning from you. So we look forward to your council's future webinars and transformation maps and, and, and analytics and white papers to help us engage more of the forum communities and partners and constituents. We, that's the positive thing about these technologies. We have the means to really educate and reach out to many more people. Now, the other piece I want to close on and is really on engaging the public at large. Again, the people that are not here that are vital to us, uh, you know, to making, to really changing the world. They are the world, right? Um, we have an excellent public engagement team led by my great colleague, Adrian Monk, that publishes every day, 365 days a year, 20 to 25 blog posts, four new social videos, 50 Facebook posts, 120 tweets, I can keep going on and on and on. They work pretty hard. Small team, but highly effective. And today, as a result of your collaboration with us and their efforts, we have 60 million followers of the form across major social media platforms engaging the public in multiple languages. And that's also very important. Their daily engagement of that 60 million followership has really led to over 200 billion, two, I'm sorry, 2 billion video views a year. I was going to say 200 million, but it's 2 billion video views a year. And 600 million people come to our websites each year to learn from you. Um, and that keeps growing, and we hope to grow that with you, that engagement, that public engagement with you. And what's remarkable is I just said, well, that's, that's, those are great numbers. Can you tell me a little bit more? And I learned that most of these are younger people. They're between the ages of 20 and 30 years old. 50-50 sort of gender distribution. More women seem to be active and follow us on social media, but that's also very positive because it's more representative of that, the real world. Um, but I also asked Doug a little further. I said, well, what happened like yesterday? Well, I said, well, you really want to know? And I, yeah, I really would like to know how our work here. And they said, well, we had over 1,000, 100,000 page views on blogs linked to your councils just yesterday alone, right? And, and these are deep engagements. I mean, there's a metric around minutes, but it's actually quite significant. And so the public is highly interested in the work of the Global Future Councils, so we look forward to your future contributions in this regard. Now, 
I'd like to, I want to close my remarks by also thanking the council managers and fellows for all their efforts to date. So thank you. And also on behalf of the World Economic Forum, I want to thank every council chair and member for your trust and commitment. You, you know, the panel talked about collaboration. Well, your continued collaboration in the days and months ahead will make the world a better place for future generations. And here I'm not speaking as a member of the managing board, I'm also speaking as a citizen, as a parent. You're really, it's, it is always inspiring and encouraging to know that we have in this room and outside this room so many people who are thinking of a better future but also planning and helping us plan for one. So thank you very much again. Now, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm coming to an end to the closing ceremony today, and I've realized that you guys are, after 48, of 48 hours of thinking, there's about 30,000 hours spent of having you experts, stakeholders, and 41 councils, over 1,000 conversations in the past 48 hours. So thank you so much for thinking for the future of the world. The question His Excellency Mohammed al Gurgawi raised yesterday and how do we address was three in three ways. One, the inequality of the future, trust in the future, and the wisdom of the future have been great anchors in the various council meetings. I've listened to your disagreeing, to your agreeing, to your sharing, challenging, and questioning each other in the pursuit of the future, a better future of humanity. It gives me hope, it truly does. We're not just talking about shaping the future for this event. We should pause for a moment to understand the scale of what has been achieved. Global cooperation has underpinned growth, new ideas, and moved one billion people out of poverty over the last 70 years. This was a highlight from Annabel Gonzalez, the non-resident senior fellow of Peterson Institute for International Economics. Yet, scale of challenges, problems, and opportunities that lie ahead are even greater. The world's need seven trillion worth of infrastructure investment in the next 10 years to boost economic prosperity. This was according to Danny Kwa, the Dean of Professor of Economics in the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. I agree. Our education system are still similar to 100 years ago. Our health system are similar to 50 years ago. And many of our mental models are, men, are many centuries old. The scale. The scale is a challenge to reinvent both new systems and mindset that serves the future. There's 133 million jobs will be created. These jobs have a new nature, the nature of AI, advanced technologies, and we need our education system to adapt faster. We need to move at the speed and the scale. Otherwise, we risk the widening of the inequality of the future, as His Excellency Mohammed al Gregawi talked about yesterday. Before we can scale new solutions to address the scale of the problems, we must first scale our collaboration with the stakeholder in both quantity and quality. We need to redesign governance system to cope with challenges, future legislations, and policies needed. Co-develop, co-created with stakeholders, innovators, business sector, other governments, NGOs, and the civil society. And now, let me shed some light on a few council outcomes. The Global Future Council on China will explore emerging models of Chinese leadership. It will develop case studies to illustrate how business leaders inside and outside China can bring an entrepreneurial approach to solve global challenges. The Global of Future Councils on Cities and Urbanization. They took a moment to think about the future cities and our organizations, and they will focus on working with cities to find and leverage scale levers. They will establish initiatives to advance city capacity and building programs, and many more. The Global Future Council on Development Finance would explore innovative financing mechanism, adoptive at scale. The Global Future Council on Geopolitics is planning to promote regional and cross-regional mechanisms for confidence building, dispute resolution, and threat management. The Global Future Council on Russia will act as an advisory board or a body by providing recommendations on the design and adaptation of artificial intelligence strategies at the national level. 
The Council as well will work on several projects, including the Country AI Readiness Index, AI as a major toolkit for best urban AI practices. The last one, which I was a member of last year, was a Global Future Council on Agile Governance, which I was, they will build on the last year work on providing guidance on the best agile governance tools for addressing different policy questions and create platform for communities, practitioners, to increase the speed of learning between our nations. And with that focus on increasing the speed and scale of learning, I'm excited to announce that one of the outcomes from the government of the UAE side, and based on the last cabinet decree by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, appointing a UAE ambassador for the fourth industrial revolution, which is first on a global level. This role is designed to support our nation's role to grow from a global hub to a global bridge. The fourth IR ambassador is elevating the technology diplomacy to cross-cutting priority in UAE foreign policy. Ambassador role has a global mandate to spearhead new global partnerships on behalf of the UAE government and service of a better future. The role is an owner of another question, the fourth question. How might we scale the future, not in 30 to 50 years, but in three to five years? And finally, a sincere and humble and grateful thank you to the World Economic Forum, especially Professor Klaus Schwab, Borje Brende, who was with us yesterday, Lee Howell, and the whole of World Economic Forum family, who, who with their energy, eagerness, and support, help us think and inspire and challenge the status quo for a better future of humanity. I look forward to us, as a collective, taking conversation and outcomes to these council meetings to Davos. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to formally announce the close of the 2019 Annual Meeting of Global Future Councils and wish everyone safe travels, but also um, looking forward to collaborating uh, through the rest of this year and through 2020. Thank you again. <laughs>